Good morning, South Tacoma, and what a mighty God we serve. I tell you, I'm excited about the things that God's doing in the life of his people. And I tell you, when God's up to something, I thank God that he has included us in it. Let's take time to pray. Father, we just love you. We give you thanks. We're looking, God, for you to do a miraculous and marvelous thing. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for the power to heal. I thank you for the power to, to bring understanding to what it is that you would have us do in these times. Lord, I pray, God, as we look to you, the altar and the finish of our faith, that, Lord, we will so trust you. Lord, we know trusting you is a reward. And I pray, God, that uh, as, as we continue to look at the time of preparation and the time that you have so ordained for now, a time of testing, a time of creating even a closer relationship than before. And I thank you, God. Oh, I thank you for today. I thank you for this day in January. Lord, I pray for this day, and I pray, God, that it will go down as a day that your people were healed by the power. They were set free by the power. They were people giving testimony on tomorrow of what you accomplished in their life today. Lord, give, forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. As, Lord, we go through your word today, Lord, give us this day. Oh, your daily bread in Jesus' name. And we've been talking on the subject of just understanding that 2021 is a year step. And that step represents a, 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 a stay alert or just being sober. It stands for temper or it stands for that, that, that T just puts things in perspective according to how we are calm, we are comfortable with, with, with being sober. And then we, we start talking about the E, which is established. We're talking established in being smart. We're talking about established in being a launch point. And then we're talking about that P as in plausible. We're talking plausible for credibility. So when we start to step up, we start to step in. We start to step out. We start to do the step that's going to help us accomplish what the season has provided. Let's accomplish what the season has provided. God gives us season. He controls the time. And we get to live out his purpose that he's established for our life. And I'm telling you right now, we look at all the rewards in this life. But when we look at the reward that God provides in First Peter 1, in verse 9, it says the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. When we talk of the salvation of your soul, we have to look at what we're stepping into when we give our life to Christ. And when we step in, what we give, when we give our life to Christ, what we're stepping in is the salvation that actually prepares us through what Jesus did for our soul. And I'm looking today, and I'm looking at the, at God prize. I'm looking at this prize for trusting Him, and His His prize is that we are our soul are rescued. But most of all, we're looking at how much God has taken us in in the relationship, and I the relationship creates uh it creates something of a, a uh, of a credibility or plausible that really puts things in perspective according to what people on the outside are looking at. People are taking the word of God that you and I are living and they're beginning to put things in perspective according to what life they want to lead. And I'm telling you, this is a time for souls. I can't say it enough. This is a time for souls. This is a time for just looking at God and saying, Lord, I want to be available to save a life. I want to be, a, be a, a available to give back for what you have provided for me. Again, 2020 and 2021 or two years in one. And we look at 2021, we're looking at, at a, it as a reminder that we're not finished with 20. And we're going to complete it, the process in 21, but we're going to do it as a result of God and him, his, his season and his season along. And I'm telling you right now, in 2021, we're going to, again, step up. We're going to step out and we're going to step in. And we're going to do that with an understanding that we need to be alert. We need to watch, we need to listen, and we need to pray. Watch, we need to do. Listen, we need to do. Okay, prayer, we need to do. But we need to be sober, we need to be alert. We need to actually have the things that God has created within his own right for us to have something to hold on to. And I'm gonna tell you today, I'm looking at, at, at the things that God is doing for us. 
And when he does something for us, he's putting us in a position, not just to be rewarded because we're obedient, but to give oh, others an opportunity to accept him. Well, I can't tell you enough about how when I first gave my life to Christ, someone thought it, thought it was, oh, so much, so much of his, his idea that God provided for him to win souls. And I tell you, I'm sitting here before you and I'm, I'm, I'm as, a, as a pastor, let alone as a believer, but as a fa- pastor saying that God will call you. He will, oh, he equip you. He will put you in a place where you are going to win because when you're blessed, you're programmed to succeed. And I want to say this before we go any further. Uh, some time ago, we talked about uh, uh, just reintroducing the, uh, the five daily um, decorations. And I want to hit those just really quick because I believe we need to get on our bicycle with the five daily um, um decorations again we need to we need to get up in the morning and we need to declare that we're the righteousness of God we need to get up in the morning and say that I am an overcomer we need to get up in the morning and say I will not accept what the devil has to offer we need to get up in the morning we need to say I have the tongue to learn we need to get up in the morning we need to say I will pursue the promises of God with expectancy and I'm telling you when you start to look at all those those scriptures that go coincide with the five decorations or the five daily decoration what you are going to experience is un, oh, uh, unheralding opportunities not only to see your life grow but to see your life grow towards a life that will need oh Jesus in the time I mean I tell you we uh, door-to-door witnesses is not something we do anymore we, I mean, we have, but we have other tools. We have opportunities. And I mean, to tell you, this is not the time to get complacent. I keep saying that. This is not the time to get complacent and get in our own corner. But this is the time to say, Lord, how can I use this pandemic? How can I use this, that I, this predicament that I'm in to actually reach for the life that are lost? Which remember, what you feed will grow and what your star will die. And I'm, I'm, I w- I'm here this morning also to say I am not glad that 2020 is gone listen when you start to uh, 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 break uh, 60 years old you're not looking for time to be over you're looking for it for 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 God to do the miracles in your life and you're looking for great expectations what is God going to use me for because my time is running short but I'm looking at how I I'm, I can't I can't I can't say enough that I thank God for this past year because I'm still being it's still being fulfilled in my life and I want to recognize God's provision and I want to recognize God's provision because I'm looking at Jesus when he comes I want I want to be I want to have a testimony that said Lord while you tarried while you tarried I I was at work oh doing what you have called me to do and I tell you right now I want to step into to my relationship with God like never before I want to step up to my relationship with God like never before I want to step out in the word of God I want to dress myself with the word of God I want to step out in the word of God and I want to step into life and life more abundantly because I tell you what when you step into life more abundantly what you're saying is is I not only have a relationship with Jesus but it's at work in my life and I am stepping in every direction that I need to you know, when you get to step in when you're looking at how God is creating your ability to step now we say the steps of a righteous are order of God. I'm telling you, when you you talk about steps, you got to take a step first. And I, when you when you're taking steps in God, it's it's one of those things that God is looking for. Way, what direction you're stepping in? Are you stepping into something that He provided for you? And most of all, what am I going to step out of? Oh, because I want to make sure I'm doing all that I can to step out of anything that is not God and step into everything that is God and create, oh, this opportunity for God to work the miraculous in my life. Listen, I, I, I love in, in, the, in the book of John, in the book of John, in 
John 13. This is a good this uh, uh, this is a good example of how people oh look to Jesus when they are part of, of some things and then when when really you have to understand what he's saying why he's saying it and getting getting a good grasp of the things that you're going to go through as a result of the relationship let me tell you something when you start to to really familiarize yourself with the word of God when you start really saying who you are in God you're going to be challenged according to what your declarations are what you're saying what you are promoting what you are gravitating or grabbing a hold to and I tell you this is a good uh, 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 story that Jesus is, is is providing for us in John 13 3 because here we, Jesus is predicting Peter's denial and in in, in um, Verse 31, it says, as soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. Oh, think about that. When Judas left the, the, the room, Judas was getting ready to go and portray. Oh, I mean, he's getting ready to portray Jesus. He's getting ready to sell Jesus out. And Jesus is speaking because he knew God and he knew what was happening all around him. He knew the, the, uh, the tragedy that was about to trans uh, unfold. But I'm telling you right now, he, he started to talk. He started to get excited about what was going to happen as a result of his obedience. Remember, obedience brings increase. And in verse part, part B of that, verse 31, it says, it says, and God will be glorified because of him. Think about that. The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory. This is Jesus saying, talking about himself. And God will be glorified because of him. Obedience. And since God received glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son. Listen to that. Since God received glory because of his Son. Amen. Remember, God was responsible for the preparation there. And he will give his son, his own glory to his son. And he will, will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me. But, can't, but you can't come where I am. Wow. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Now, first of all, he says, God's going to bring glory. And then God's going to give, he's going to share his glory with the son. And then he began to talk about how obedience is going to create this glory. But not only will this obedience <laughs> create his glory, but he's saying at the same time, I'm no longer going to be with you because I'm out of my obedience. I'm going to be taken away from you. But when I, I'm taken away from you, he says, I, I, I'm, I, I'm going to leave you something that is going to help you because you're going to need each other. We need each other. And because we need each other, we need to listen to what verse 34 says. Verse 4 says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I loved you. You should love each other. Oh, now when Jesus <laughs> really put this in perspective, he's also giving us the, this. He, Jesus knew uh, those disciples better. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And that's what this really is all about. What you know, who you know, and why you know what you know because of who you know. Yes. You see, as we as, as he has made ways to bring who and what determines termination that comes as a result of a, a reaching out and bringing those to him. Jesus has come to know us all. And I'm telling you right now, when you look at the word of God, it shows everything that we need to know about what Jesus know about us. In other words, this is where trust comes in. When you know somebody knows you better than you know yourself and they are there for you to give you what you need to be successful in life, when you can trust that, oh, there's something about knowing how that is and why that is, but where it comes from. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, the love of God is an incredible thing. 
I've done some things that I uh, would be ashamed to say at this juncture, but they are testimony. It, what I've looked at in a spiritual sense, I can say, oh, what I went, went through, what I've gone through, God has brought me out, and because he brought me out, I'm a better man. I am I'm, I'm, I'm one of those ones that I'm looking for how I can better myself each day, and I'm, I'm encouraging you to do as well. See, Jesus knew love because of the love of father and because he loved the father he he loved us and when he loved us he formed us of how we should now love through the relationship he's provided for us and i'm saying this because i want you to recognize there's things that you're going to see things that you're going to do you're going to be a part of that that's going to give a sour taste in your mouth it, it might not be something you like it might not be something that you w want to be privilege to a uh, part of because of what it, it it actually constitute in what you think how you think and what god wants to do and i'm telling you right now i i've not been one that uh, just because i want i know god wants me to do it i've done it i've had to to really humble be humble i mean humility is a, a, a beautiful thing i've had to to delay i've have had to create opportunity for me to listen because i heard things and i uh, you know you sometimes you hear things and you don't want to believe what you heard but it doesn't matter god wants us to be in the know through our hearing but we also need to listen you see we should endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace and when we do that what we're looking at is loving one another with a pure and fervent heart we need to walk in the hum the humbleness and the, the humility of the word of god and begin to recognize that god is so oh, in his word and because his, he's in his word and we are in the word then he's in us and now he's able to step us up to the place that we need to be and we now because we have the relationship step out you can hear a little more, a lot about that that step up step out and step into and i look i love verse 35 look at 35 because 35 says your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples very key especially now the love of the world is being created to 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 establish to 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 oh make everybody whim worthwhile looking at it. i mean there's so much stuff out there there's so many people are trying to make so many people happy but let me tell you something when you get a hold of the word of god the word of god is not going to make everybody happy the word of our god is going to make everybody honest everybody truth we're going to make everybody in 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 a position to actually see god and his love and his relationship i'm telling you everyone wants that everyone listen i know god is in my life because of what i knew was in my life prior to him filling my life and the bible said he that hunger and thirst after righteous shall be filled so when you hunger when you thirst after the word of god you're going to see a fulfillment that comes that that makes little or no room for error or little or no room for sin and you got to make sure that that is where god wants you <laughs> in the time of need now when we say we love one another and when we love one another, it proves to the world that uh, um, you are my disciple, Simon Peter. The first thing he asked, he said, Lord, where, where, where are you going? I mean, <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> to me. Uh, Peter, Simon says, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me, but you will follow me later. God has work for us. Oh, when we give our life to Christ, salvation comes on, on the scene, we become followers. And we become followers. Watch this. Jesus is trying to say to you, let love now create a following. If love creates a following, then what you're doing is you're stepping up in, into what the relationship God has provided so that you can step out in the word and allow the word to be your dress. Allow the word to be your attire. Allow the word of God to be the relationship that you're stepping out into. And watch this. When you step into what God now has given you as the, uh, oh, the ability and the authority to speak 
Listen to me. It's going to create an opportunity for you to be the best that you could ever be according to what God created in as for his purpose. So G Peter asks, <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> and Jesus says, listen, if you, in time you will follow me. And I like this because of what, what is leading up to me. Because again, we're looking at a God of preparation. And we talk of preparation. We're talking about where are you now? What is God preparing you for now? Hey, listen, everybody, everybody is a part of this pandemic. Everybody is a part of what we're going through after this, uh, this uh, uh, long-awaited election and everybody putting their two cents in it and all this other good stuff. But let me tell you something. <coughs> Be careful of what you ask for and how you ask for it because if it's not God, if it's God's not in it, then y your testing and your trial is going to increase all the more because God wants to see where you at in the midst of everything that is happening in and around you. And that's what Jesus was trying to get the disciples to say. And they were sitting down at the table and, and G Judas got up and he began to talk about his, his father and all of a sudden he began to say he's gone. And Peter asked the question and now Peter's uh, uh, putting things in perspective according to where he understood where he relied within the relationship because of the, the time spent with Jesus. And Jesus here it, uh, in verse 36b, it says, Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I, I come now, Lord? He asked, I am ready to die for you, is what Peter said. That's a powerful statement. I said, it's a powerful statement. Are you ready to die for Jesus? Are you pretending? Are you ready to, 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 to stand and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die? When asked the question, are you ready to go after the loss uh -uh, according to the love that you now have for, for, for uh, Jesus? The Jesus told Peter after Peter said, I'll die for you. Jesus said in 38, 30, 38 be it, uh, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. Now look at that now. He's putting it together. Jesus trying to prepare them for a time of him leaving so they would have something that they could hold on to and eventually follow. And Peter is saying, I'll die for you. He just, I mean, that, that was the type of man Peter was. And I pray that as God continues to purify us and take us through those things that we need to, to, to know, especially when we start talking about stepping out of the things of, 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 of old and into the things of new, we need to recognize what we're stepping out of as much as what we're stepping into. But what we need to do is recognize that God wants us to step up before. And God was giving these disciples something to step up. Something to rise above. And look at this. I, I, I love it because Peter was still asking these questions. And as he's asking these questions, Jesus is giving them, giving them answers according to what he thought they could take. And finally, in, 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 in one, of our, one of my favorite scriptures, in John 14 and 1, it says, don't let your heart be troubled. Finally, Jesus told Peter and, and, and them, don't let your heart be troubled. Because he already said you're going to deny it three times before the morning. But he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Remember we talked about that trusting God in, in the beginning. That trusting God is going to bring salvation to your soul. He says, trust in God and trust also in me. If, 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 if you recognize what he's saying, if you're listening for what you are hearing right now, he said, <laughs> trust in God. Okay. Trusting God. Because before Jesus, all they heard of was God. With the exception of those scholars, those that, that knew the word of God, that, that recognized the, the prophets of old and, and their forefathers. But all they knew was, was God. And God gave him Jesus. And Jesus said, now if you believe God, believe also in me or trust in me. Trust also in me. He said, there's more than enough room in the father's home. <laughs> and if there's not so, if there were not so, would I have not told you that I am going to prepare, there's that word prepare, a place for you. When everything is ready, <laughs> I love it. When everything's ready, and I believe everything is almost ready, 
I said, I believe everything is almost ready. Hmm. I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am. And I'm saying to you, there's something about listening to what God is saying here. What he's saying here to his son Jesus that, listen, I don't know if I've given you Jesus, but I've given you something that you can hold, through, hold on through, through Jesus. And he's going to bring glory not only to my name, but he's going to bring glory to me. And that through that glory, you are going to be glorified through your obedience. And out of your obedience, he's going to bring something that you can step up, step in, and step out. Oh, I, I, I love this because when you listen to the one that, 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 that is speaking here, this is Jesus. And I'm saying to you that there's something about understanding how much of what you now have and how you see it for what it is is going to help you during this time. Some of us or taking shots. Some of us are going through. Some of us, are even on our job. Some of us right now are looking at whether we should take this 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 this, this uh, uh, vaccine or whatever. We're, we're, there's so much fear going on. There's so much. Uh, I mean, that you have to uh, uh, contend with. Some of us are in positions right now that we wish never happened. But because of that. We need to grab a hold to God all the more. We need to trust God. Ah, I love it. We need to come up to 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 uh, uh, the plate and take a step. We need to take a step in the batter's box and hit that home run by saying, "For God, I live, and for God I'll die." And I'm going to do my part. I'm going to trust Him, and I'm going to create an atmosphere and environment that's conducive to me succeeding according to the will of God. I, I, I listen, I want to, to, to say this as well. There's a lot of people out there who are just like Peter. When Jesus begins to speak, when you start to uh, read the word of God and what have you, and you want to do the right thing because you know the right thing, but when the time comes and when you put on the spot, sometimes you don't, don't uh, 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 do the right thing because you're, 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 you're feeling anything but doing the right thing because it's not only putting on your spot, but it could potentially cause you to lose your spot. Let me say something. Don't, nothing is worth losing your relationship with God. Stay the course. Stay with what God has. Allow the word of God to be. Oh, what it said is going to be in your life. And I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how we as believers, we all have a position in this gospel. We all have purpose in this gospel. We had all these things. And remember, Peter, Peter denied. We know the story. Peter denied, okay, three times. But Jesus came back and was able to ask him, and he was able to Oh, rid him of all those denials by giving him an opportunity to answer the question three times, just like he denied him three. He was able to bring it out of him. That's another another story in itself. But as he brought it out of him, Peter began to he, Peter stepped up, and then Peter began to step out. And you remember on the day of Pentecost, he not only stepped out, but he stepped into the lives of those people, and lives grew. Oh, and I'm telling you right now. Even the same Peter, when you think about all the things that he says about the scripture, he was a leader. He led God's people. He put God people. Well, let's go to the, to the scripture because I believe one of the things that Peter wanted, the, the leadership, and he wanted the, those that were, were, were under leadership and those that are created an opportunity to be a, a, a force to be reckoned with in the body of Christ. He wanted us all to see how to step up, how to step in, but must most of all how to how to allow the word of God to become the center and the focus of our life and when you look at first Peter 5 in verse 1 all of a sudden he started talking to the shepherds and and this is the same Peter that denied Christ but put in perspective he was also the Peter that got it right and got things together and he began to uh, uh, work on on behalf of the gospel to see the lost saved as Peter it was an incredible uh uh, 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 man of God. He, look at what he says in, in, in a verse um, uh, one of chapter, uh, the first letter Peter wrote in, in, in chapter five. He says, the elders who are among you, I exhort you. He said, I am whom 
who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Yeah, just like Jesus said, he, he, he brought glory. Now he's saying, listen, you can be the same one that bring glory. But he's saying, listen, I was there. I, I watched these things being revealed. He says, shepherd, pastors, leaders, elders. He says, the flock of God, which is among you, serving and overseeing, not by compulsion, but willingly. Not by what? Compulsion, but willingly. Not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Don't use it as, a, as, as, as self-gain. It says, nor as being Lord over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Leaders. Amen. You're not above the people. You're in with the people. And you gather that relationship according to the purpose that God has. Allow it to be what is needed. Because let me tell you something. When you're look, looking at relationships for those that are, are, are lost, they're looking for somebody to lead them. Looking for somebody that they can follow. Looking for someone that they can hold on to. And we as, as, as leaders, as shepherds, we've got to make sure we're not uh, creating uh, uh, um, crazes and nonsense that cause the people to fall away instead of follow and it says and when the chief shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away just about reward remember we talk about when when, when salvation is a reward is as a result of trusting and believing god and when we look at this, we have to recognize that there are things that you and I are going to see as a result of what we know. When you have been called to lead, and I believe a good uh, leader is a good reader. I believe as you read your word, as you read those things that complement the word, as you read those different things that are going to help you in how you see the word of God and how you listen for what the word of God is saying, you got to know that there's things that God is going to show you because, oh, oh, and, and especially when you start looking at the people of God, he's going to begin to show you the different things that are going to make. So listen to me. We have to pray for our leaders. We have to give, oh, that spent time uh, uh, praying. I want you to pray for me. I want to be a good leader. I want to be someone that trusts God. I want somebody to really see because listen to me, I'm not going to help you get to heaven and go to hell myself. I want to make sure none of my salvation is true, but I'm walking out the word of God and walking into uh, life and life more abundantly. And listen, it's when you look at that, you have to recognize that leaders need to resist the devil. So the, uh, the, uh, those that are being led. In verse 5, it says, likewise, you young people. Amen. You young people, submit yourself to your elders. In other words, don't be know-it-all. Submit yourself to those that you were praying for, that you are leading. Why? Because God wants you to see, okay, that you can also be a leader at, at some point if you continue to follow. It says, yes, all of you be submissive one, one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. In other words, you got to make sure that you are, are, are walking in step. We're walking in unity. We're putting things together because we want to see life uh, um, change. In verse 6, it says, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in what? Due time. There's a due time. And I believe this is time <laughs> uh, 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 for due season. I believe that God is going to show us. We talk about revival. We talk about the things that are, are, are going to uh, happen as a result of some of the things we're going through. Sometimes we have to go through, we talk about going through something bad uh, to, uh, to, to appreciate something good. Let me say this. When you are trying and when you are tested, you got to know that regardless of whether it's good or bad, listen, you're not looking for a, a good time at on the tail end of a bad time or vice versa. What you're looking for is consistency. You're looking for God to be in whatever you're going through because he's going to bring you through because he's going to give you the ability to step up. And as you ha uh, receive the ability to step up, listen, you what you step into is what you're stepping out of sometimes. For example, there's things when, 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 when we recognize a trying time, Sometimes that trying time is there for a period of time that we don't uh, 
not necessarily agree because it's there been there too long. And we can't see it because we want to get out of it. So we get caught up in what we in and not the process. Again, we have to look at the process. Oh, I tell you, on Wednesday night, Arlene's been talking a good move, uh, message about prep, preparing and repairing. And I'm saying you're missing out if you're not listening about how to be repaired through her time of preparation or how to be uh, um, repaired after you've prepared, uh, uh, repaired after you've been uh, prepared and I'm telling you there's something about the word of God and how consistent it is when you are looking for something that brings change with consistency oh let the word of God be oh but humble yourself humble yourself it says humble yourself under the, the mighty hand of who God not man that's where you get this thing confused when you humble yourself in the mighty hand of God then who exalts you has a great had the greatest reward man can only exalt you so much man will will exalt you today and and, and throw you down tomorrow but God will exalt you and show you how to, to maintain that exaltation oh uh, in in ways that are are just uh, 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 mind can't fathom and here's where you put it in 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 perspective according to what god says he is and what he was and the promises of god are yes and amen i said the promises of god are yes and amen and in this due season in this due time oh you're going to reap a harvest if you sow according to the spiritual or according to oh my goodness the un incorrupt things when you start looking at how you are going to win so how you're going to be available for God to be used he says in verse 7 he says cast all your cares upon him for he what careth for you when you humble yourself and he exalts you what he's saying give me God said give me what uh, 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 leaders humble be humble <laughs> followers those that are helping the leaders be humble don't get ahead of yourself don't get ahead of god don't get in a way when you think you are getting ahead of god or getting ahead of him, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you and when you're looking for him to do the miraculous watch it you've got to be in a position of humility because when you're in a position of humility, then you'll create, it creates an opportunity for trust even to be stronger. When you trust, you believe. And when you believe, you will obey. In being sober, there's something that I want you to know when we're talking about steps. It's sometimes uh, it, it's, it's the, the difference in how long you're about, how long evil and how long things are, 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 are uh, being being negotiated and being stepped through and stepped around and 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 and, 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 and <laughs> oh, amen the workarounds it might be determined uh, by your soberness and that step again is all about being sober in the beginning because the soberness will cause you to be alert and when you're alert alert them i use that amber alert last time it makes a lot of noise because it wants your attention it wants you to know that something is not right and let me tell you something your, your actions how you see it will be the the difference in difference in whether somebody live or die in some cases because of the 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 the, uh, the, the freshness of it the 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 the, the after the action that after it is transpired and I'm telling you there's something about being sober there's something about being vigilant because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he made the vow and I think there's things that we need to recognize now that creates within our own um, own life from our own perspective because let me say something Sometimes we are our worst enemies, and we've heard that before. And sometimes we create things that, that, that shouldn't be there. Sometimes we, we're walking in things that doesn't make sense to anybody but our, our own uh, uh, and our own thoughts and what we have created. But let me say something. Just because you created a system, because you think it's right according to you, it doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone or it was la uh, outlast 
the word of God that's inside of you. Sometimes you have to bounce what you've created off the word of God. No, not sometimes. You have to always bounce what you now know according to the word of God. And when you do that, it's going to help you see the fullness of what God is. And it's, I'm trying to, to, to really uh, bring this step thing into to play. It. And I want to bring the step thing into play in this last uh, few verses before I close. I want you to know God has already stepped up for you. He stepped up you for you for by giving his son Jesus. Jesus then stepped out and died on the cross. And through his stepping out and dying on the cross, he stepped up again. And when he stepped up, he stepped into position to give us what we, we have right now. That's eternal life because of the sacrifice. But now there's no more sacrifice for sin. Jesus died only once. And because he died that once, and now Peter, oh my God, goodness, Peter's given us in, 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 in um, uh, five and eight. He gives us something that we can work with. And I believe when you become um, strong in the things of God, you become vigilant. You be, be, be becoming uh, uh, that which will cause you to see everything that God is doing, why he's doing it, and from whom he's doing it. All of a sudden, the adversary of the devil becomes small in comparison to what he was prior to you giving your life to Christ. Now, he goes around at a wrong line. And I want to say this. When you think about as something as something you have to make sure you make it bigger than what it really is by what you don't know <laughs> not what you know but what you don't know and we want you to to really hear the word of god being the new how the oh the authority that comes as a result of what the enemy comes around as because he's an imitator he can't uh, create anything we create things for him to work through and work around. But I'm telling you right now, let the word of God be something that he cannot be a part of. Oh, <laughs> be the center of your life. Listen, it says in verse 9, it says, Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same suffering suffering, are ex experienced by your brother in the world. In other words, we're not in, in this thing alone. If we look at it local and translocal, we're looking at an opportunity for God to use us. South Tacoma, we're going to be used of God. And I'm going to start talking about how we're going to do that very soon. You see in verse 10 it says, But 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 be the God of all peace who called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a perfect while while perfect establish strengthen and settle you now let me read that old thing again in verse 10 and i'll finish up with verse 11 it says but but may the god of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by christ jesus after you have suffered a while perfect establish is that word establish strengthen and settle you to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now let me let me let me some put let me summarize that and put that together for you. There's things that God says you are going to for a while suffer. But when you're suffering, perfection, strength. Think about that perfection, strength. Okay, establish. And I'm telling you right now, when you talk about step, you got to ma make sure you understand your steps are going to strengthen you because it's helping you move. And let me tell you something, there's nothing like maneuvering in the word of God. And then when you start talking about the, the very strengthening, strengthening and, and, and establishment becoming a part of the perfection in God, then watch this, you're going to be settled, amen, every time you step. It's almost like when you're stepping on the beach. When you step and your the weight of the sand is under you, I mean the the sand and the weight, the weight. Think about this: the weight begins to create a settling of the sand. What that says is not only is step firm, but it's dead to stay because now your footprint in the sand as a result of the weight it carried, the authority, the sand has to give to the weight. 
And I'm telling you right now, there's things that God saying, if you just hold on, let there be a time where you are settled, established and strengthened. Oh, you are going to see him in, 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 in light of everything else around you. And I'm telling you right now, this is the season. This is the time where what was going on around us, we can't get caught up in it. But we got to make sure we settle down and begin to orchestrate through the word of God the steps. God's word will order our step. And as we step, we'll see the fullness of God in everything we do. Oh, I tell you right now, I'm looking for God to do the miraculous in our lives. And I'm telling you right now, I'm praying. I'm believing God for where you're at. I believe in God for you being in a, a step ahead of the enemy. I am believing God for creating oh, an environment that's conducive for your step, that you're going to step up above the situation. You're going to step out. Oh, as a result of the word of God and this covering. And, but you're going to step into eternal life and you're going to bring along those that are in need of that. Let's pray. Father, we just love you and we thank you for everything that you're doing, how you're doing it, when you're doing it. Lord, give us ears to hear. And Lord, we want to watch. We want to listen. We want to pray. And we want to be sober. Oh, we want to be sober during this time, God. And I pray, God, as you continue to allow me to develop and formulate, God, the things that are going to be necessary for us to, oh, succumb to the things that the word of God says and be a force to be reckoned with. Because, Lord, right now, I just pray that we would look at the word of God is enough. You are enough, God. And I say thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are here listening to me, you haven't given your life to Christ, it's, just, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing to watch salvation because it's going to take a trusting in God to bring salvation on board. And when you're trusting God, all you're saying is, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteous. You're saying, I believe that your son Jesus, who you sent for me, died on the cross, rose on the third day, and now he's providing us with authority and power. Oh, as a result of that, he's come now. And let me tell you something. You ask him in your life, he does just that. He comes. And I'm praying that that thing will oh, take place and take hold to who you are and become a part of what God said you are. We love you. And I'm praying that there's things. And I want us to take time to pray. And I want us to say, think of how healing is our portion. Deliverance is our portion. I want us to look at how when we start praying for people and their, 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 the sickness that have hit, struck their body, the disease that hit their body, that we're believing God as we pray, not w for it to take place in a, in, uh, over a long period of time, but we're praying for it now. If God decides to do it, fine. If you don't decide to do it, process, fine. But I'm praying that God will move. Let's take time to pray in closing. Father, right now we ask your blessing upon this time that we spent. Lord, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we look for the step. We look for God, the, the, the staying alert. We're looking for the temperament. Lord, we're looking for the establishment. We're looking for the plausible. And we're looking for those things that are going to help us, God, be a, a force to be reckoned with, something that we can step in, to step up to, and we can step out of. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just so right now bring a uh, healing to our land, bring healing to our nation. But Lord, our nation that's under God need to step up. Lord, we pray for the other nations that are, are, are struggling right now. Lord, they're war torn. And I pray, God, that you would, right now in the name of Jesus, just move upon our missionaries and all those that are overseas, God, as well as domestic, Lord. Take God. Oh, uh, take them to the place they went. Let their steps be God. Oh, uh, uh, with authority right now. Lord, we lift up our president before him. We pray for his family. We lift up, God, the, the uh, men and women that serve these United States Armed Forces, God, and their family touch. We pray for our first responders, God, they're those th for this, this vaccine that they're, the, the so many of them are receiving, God. I just pray in Jesus' name, oh, God, for the right stuff. I pray, God, for the things that are going to be, Lord, you and what you have, God, to, oh, work with with the people god and i pray god that you would just uh, love on them and people be their protection we love you father we say thank you in jesus name amen
And before we get out of here, we want to give a shout out oh, right now to Little Buchanan. Oh, right now in the name of Jesus, Liam, we just celebrate you and your, your birthday. Franklin, we just actually take you, put our arms around you and say, oh, we appreciate you and we celebrate you as well. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. We pray, oh, birthday blessings upon y'all in Jesus' name. Hey, we love you mucho. You spend the season so I can walk right.